This is a 2.5 ton Jayco all-terrain caravan and it is attached to one of the most favorite tow rigs in Australia and one of the most in demand as well. This is the Toyota 300 series Land Cruiser in high spec as well, GR Sport. You're looking at around $140,000 worth of vehicle here and it is one of Australia's favorites for something like the big lap of Australia, that great family holiday that so many of us aspire to. But is this the best choice as a tow rig in Australia though? I'm gonna find out in this video today. That is my job, so let's go hit the road. Firstly, let's crunch some numbers on this 300 series Land Cruiser as a tow vehicle. Now apologies in advance, there are a lot of numbers here and it does get a little bit complicated, but stick with me because hopefully by the end it will all make sense. With a curb weight of 2,630 kgs and a GVM of 3,280, you've effectively got a 650 kilo payload left over in this GR Sport. A base spec GX does better in this regard, it weighs less and so it gets a payload of 785 kilos. With a brake to towing capacity of 3.5 tonnes and a gross combination mass of 6,750 kilos, the GVM of the vehicle effectively drops to 620 kilos when you are towing at the maximum limit. But wait, there's more, or actually, there's less. For our GR Sport model, for example, towing a 3.5 ton caravan and taking into account the tow ball mass as part of the vehicle's payload, which is around 10% of the trailer's weight as a rule of thumb, means there's only 270 kgs left over, and that's for passengers, gear, accessories, and any other equipment you are carrying. So while the available payload is an improvement over the previous generation 200 series, one can clearly see why an aftermarket GVM upgrade is such a popular and common choice for caravanners. GVM upgrades, which includes a process of second stage manufacture in Australia, are available from the aftermarket industry for the Land Cruiser 300 series. They do vary in terms of costs and how big that increase in GVM is. Expect to pay around $5,000 or more for one in your vehicle and consider doing it before the car is first registered because this will reduce the cost of the upgrade and reduce the complexity of the process as well. Our caravan here is a 19-foot Jayco all-terrain caravan, which weighs 2,490 kilos unladen. So that leaves us with a payload of 401 kilos, once again assuming we've got that 10% tow ball mass of 249 kgs. However, don't forget to account for whatever gear you end up loading into your own van, and how heavy your tow ball is in the real world. Along with being built on a new, lighter platform, this 300 series Land Cruiser gets a 3.3 litre twin turbo diesel V6 under the bonnet. That makes 227 kilowatts and 700 newton meters. That runs through a 10-speed automatic gearbox with a full-time four-wheel drive system. While the GR Sport model here, which is priced from $142,101 before on-road costs, gets elements like adaptive dampers, locking diffs, and EKDSS sway bars, the diesel V6 is standard across the range, and that range starts from $94,301 plus on-roads as a base GX model. Our GR Spot model gets a trick 360 degree camera system that does really help in terms of visibility and maneuvering. But I've got to say that rear facing reversing camera does offer plenty of clarity and vision. And that is just the ticket for when you are hitching up your van. First thing to talk about with this 300 series Land Cruiser, of course, is the engine and the gearbox. 3.3 litre twin turbo, it's smaller, it's got less cylinders, but performance is fantastic. This feels nice and flexible. It doesn't feel like it's working really hard all of the time. And when you do get it working hard, you give it a boot full with two and a half tons on the back. It's pretty responsive and it gets along just nicely. It doesn't need to change down gears to get moving. And I do really appreciate that in a vehicle that's gonna to be towing a lot or towing fairly heavy loads like we've got here. The 10 speed gearbox is good. Like I said, it doesn't change around gears too much. It's happy to use that 700 newton meters that's available right around 1500 RPM, up to 2000 RPM on the Taco. That seems to be where this car is happiest and I do really like that. Suspension is 
a little bit different. This does feel slightly soft and wallowing when this car is loaded up with some weight on the back, but this GR Sport does have a party trick. Because we've got adaptive dampers, twist this across here. I'm gonna go from normal into Sports S, and then I can go into Sport S Plus. What that does is a few things. It firms up the suspension, so these dampers are now much firmer, and it controls that weight over the back a little bit nicer. It also gives a heavier feeling to the steering, and it changes throttle response and gearbox mapping as well. So it's almost like a towing mode, I suppose. You could use it like a towing mode anyway, and it does work well. It just makes this feel a little bit more stable and secure, especially when you're doing around 100 k's an hour on the highway like I am at the moment. Naturally, the next big thing to talk about is fuel economy. So I've been averaging around 11 or 12 litres per 100 without the van. Put this van on the back, which coincidentally weighs about the same amount as the vehicle overall. I'm using 18 litres per 100 at the moment on average overall. That includes one big run up a mountain, a fair bit of stop-start, low-speed traffic, which definitely doesn't do the Land Cruiser any favours in terms of economy, but I'm also unladen, so put some kids in the back, some extra bags, fill up the tanks in that van. You can expect to use maybe 18 or 19 litres per 100 on the long run, which I think is pretty good. Visibility is pretty good overall. I don't have any extendable mirrors fitted at the moment, and if you're gonna be doing a lot of towing, naturally that would be a really good idea. Awesome aftermarket ones that extend out for that extra vision. But you know what? This isn't too bad at the moment. I will say though, the Nissan Patrol, the current generation of that does have better visibility overall. I think that is a wider vehicle, so you can just see a little bit more down the side of the car. I did tow with a Nissan Patrol with this exact trailer but I'm not able to do it as a comparison at the moment because we had some technical issues with wiring harnesses. I won't bore you with the details, but there is a comparison on the Land Cruiser versus the Patrol that doesn't include towing. That's something that's well worth checking out if you're interested in those two vehicles. But back to this one, visibility is pretty good and there is a little bit of sway driving along on the highway, I think. Suspension is slightly soft, I would say, although Adding the Sport mode and the Sport Plus mode of this GR Sport does make a difference. Just makes it feel a little bit more tied down overall. I would say that perhaps the Nissan Patrol, just being a bigger, heavier vehicle, handled the weight of this caravan slightly better. And I would also guess that the Land Rover Defender adds another level of sophistication in terms of the suspension and the chassis in comparison to this Land Cruiser. So it will probably handle the weights a little bit nicer as well. So if you're gonna be towing a lot with your Land Cruiser, I would genuinely consider or suggest doing some aftermarket suspension, maybe a GVM upgrade and that sort of thing as well to your vehicle because it will probably just feel a little bit more settled and comfortable and happy or cruising along the highway doing speeds of sometimes up to 100 k's an hour with crosswinds and that sort of thing. All in all, in summary, this Land Cruiser is good. I think it's an improvement over the old 200 series Land Cruiser because of a better engine and a better gearbox for towing. Still not perfect, I would say, so if you're looking to do the big lap and do some big kilometers towing something, I would look at some modifications to the vehicle just to make it suit a little bit better. And if it was me, I'd probably be looking at a GX or a GXL and saving some money and putting that towards fuel. There is no doubt the Land Cruiser 300 did quite well towing this 2.5 tonne van as a stock standard vehicle. But if you're towing a 3.5 tonne van, my advice is go for more than 3.5 tonnes as a braked towing capacity. Look at something that's got a high capacity for your trailer, maybe 4.5 tonnes or even up to 7 tonnes in an American style heavy duty four wheel drive ute. After spending some time towing a big van with this 300 series Land Cruiser, I can definitely get the appeal. Obviously, some people don't even go past the badge with a Land Cruiser. They just want one, and fair enough, I do get that. But I've also got to say, for $140,000 like this GR Sport, you are opening yourself up to some pretty good competition. Things like Land Rover Defenders, there's a Nissan Patrol that is significantly cheaper than this, but is only V8 powered, so you'll have to do the maths in terms of which one works for you in that regard. 
But also, don't forget the big rigs from America. $140,000 does get you into the heavy duty space in terms of Chevy and Ram vehicles. They're much bigger, but they might suit you a little bit more. For me, if I was looking at a 300 series Land Cruiser, I'd be looking down the spec to GX or GXL because I want to get a little bit more bang for buck there. I'm going to get a little bit of extra payload as well. And that brings me to my final point. While this powertrain is fantastic, and you've got a three and a half ton towing capacity there, there is the payload of this vehicle to keep in mind. And when you include the tow ball mass of your caravan onto the vehicle, you might be surprised how little you have left over. So throw some extra budget in there for a GVM upgrade, because once you go over the Weybridge, you realize that you probably will need it. A big thank you to Jayco Sydney for loaning us this all-terrain caravan for the day. It has towed quite nicely behind the car. That thing behind me there weighs just under 2.5 tonnes as you see it there, but it does load as in terms of an aggregate trailer mass up to just over 3 tonnes. So you can fit a fair bit of gearing there, provided of course you've got the vehicle to tow it with. But thank you to those guys and thanks for watching the video as well. Let us know any questions in the comments section below and make sure you subscribe to Drive on YouTube.